Today is July 31st, which is Harry Potter's birthday. And so today I'm gonna to be ranking every birthday present Harry ever receives, from the toy broomstick he gets as a baby before his parents are killed, all the way through to everything he gets for his 17th birthday in the final book. But before we jump in, in honor of Harry's birthday, I actually made a video on the official Harry Potter YouTube channel, unboxing a bunch of fabulous Harry Potter goodies, so do go and check that out. But for now, let's jump into ranking every birthday gift Harry Potter ever received. Starting out strong then, Sirius gets Harry a toy broomstick when he's still a baby, and it's so sweet when we read about it in a letter from Lily to Sirius. Now, in true Sirius fashion, Harry's only 12 months old when he gets this, and I googled it. Most babies don't learn to walk, even until a little bit after that. So, Sirius getting Harry a broomstick to fly on before he can even walk, that is peak Sirius. 10 out of 10, no notes. And honestly, who knows if Harry would have become such a great seeker if he hadn't had that broomstick as a baby. So this is a god-tier gift starting off strong. Quickly shifting from a great gift to a terrible one, we have a coat hanger from the Dursleys, which they get for Harry before he goes to Hogwarts. Now, the Dursleys never were particularly good gift givers, at least not to Harry. Dudley, on the other hand, gets everything he ever wanted. But I suppose since they set the bar so low, the fact that even got him anything and remembered his birthday? No, they're still rubbish. There's no silver lining here. Just think about it though, a coat hanger for a boy who lives under the stairs. Like, he doesn't even have a wardrobe. I'd be surprised if he has much to hang, let alone somewhere to hang it. This is F. This is one of the worst gifts ever. Now, the Dursleys also gift Harry very generously a pair of Vernon Dursley's old socks. I don't know about you, but I wouldn't want to wear anything that man has touched with his feet. That said, compared to the coat hanger, for which Harry has no wardrobe, at least he can actually use these socks. And he eventually gives them to Dobby, which made Dobby very happy indeed, so it's not all bad. But they are still just old socks, so we're gonna give this a D. So Hagrid shows up on Harry's 11th birthday and gives him a homemade cake, which is very thoughtful. Like, I doubt Harry ever got his own birthday cake, let alone one that was baked by somebody with love and with care. That said, I'm gonna put all food in the same category because he gets a lot of chocolate frogs, sweets, and all sorts of things over the years. And I just think, in a world with magic, with so many interesting things, toys and trinkets, even little gimmicky things, food isn't the best gift. Like, chocolate frogs in particular, we're in the wizarding world, come on. Chocolate is so mundane. So overall, any food gift, we're gonna give it a C. Like, it's fine, but it's not exciting. So also for Harry's 11th birthday, Hagrid buys Harry Hedwig the Owl. Now in the movies, Harry seems to go straight from Diagon Alley to the Hogwarts Express, so it's fine. But in the books, he still has a month back at the Dursleys after he gets Hedwig before he goes to Hogwarts. Now, Hagrid had seen how awful the Dursleys were, and so giving Harry an owl to take back to Surrey with him was either very cruel to the owl or very kind to give Harry some company. Either way, Hedwig is the best gift. Honestly, why has nobody ever bought me an owl? God-tier gift, fantastic from Hagrid. So moving past Harry's 11th birthday, he doesn't get a lot for his 12th because Dobby steals everything, but for his 13th birthday, Ron buys Harry a pocket sneaker scope. And so a sneaker scope is supposed to light up and spin or twirl or whirl when somebody around you does something untrustworthy. Which, I mean, to someone like Harry, who constantly has bad things happening to him, Great gift idea, only let down by the fact that Ron is always with Harry. And Ron is always, at least until the end of The Prisoner of Azkaban, accompanied by a certain Peter Pettigrew pretending to be a rat. So this sneaker scope was useless in that they thought it was broken because it was constantly going off. And while we're on the topic of sneaker scopes, Hermione buys Harry another one when he's 17. But why, when she knows Harry already has one? Even if the one that Ron gave Harry was rubbish and cheap, like, we know Ron is insecure about being poor and not being able to give Harry good gifts. We see a whole conversation about it in the Goblet of Fire. So it's very insensitive of Hermione to try and one-up Ron like that. Like, oh, Ron bought you a sneaker scope a few years ago. Here's a better, more expensive one. Overall, a sneaker scope is not a bad gift idea, especially for someone like Harry but it's never really that useful, so we're gonna give it a C. Moving on to a much better gift from Hermione, she gets Harry a broomstick servicing kit for his 13th birthday, and that's actually really thoughtful. Because not only is Hermione not into broomsticks or flying at all, which makes this a really empathetic gift, but also Harry has one of the best and most expensive brooms 
available on the market at this point, the Nimbus 2000. And I know she didn't know when she bought the gift, but he's going to get a Firebolt later, which probably also needs a lot of maintenance. So this gift is practical, it's thoughtful, and it gives Harry a lot of comfort when he's with the Dursleys in the summer. He dives into this kit, throws himself into maintaining his broom, something he loves. I honestly think the bar is set really high for God tier with Hedwig, so this is going to go into a solid A tier gift. But it's not far off of the god tier, honestly. So Hagrid has bought Harry Hedwig, one of the best gifts he ever receives in the whole series. And then the next gift he gives him is the Monster Book of Monsters. And look, I am an animal lover, okay? But a hairy book with fangs that tries to attack me? Even I'm saying no. Like, in theory, a textbook is not a bad gift idea because textbooks can be expensive. Not that Harry can't afford them. But one that can cause you serious physical harm? Not so sure. Plus, after Draco has his run-in with Buckbeak, Hagrid changes his lesson plans to far more tame animals, meaning I'm pretty sure the things that he planned to teach about from the Monster Book of Monsters probably don't come up in class anymore. So for the Monster Book of Monsters, we're gonna go D tier gift. So Harry doesn't technically get the Firebolt for his birthday, but Sirius does say to consider it 13 years worth of birthday gifts, so we're including it. Not only does this feel way more emotional on a reread when you now know that Sirius bought Harry his first ever broom as a baby, but also flying is one of Harry's favorite things to do. The first half of the Philosopher's Stone, there's this undertone that Harry still doesn't quite feel like he belongs at Hogwarts. But then he starts to fly and he's good at it and he finds out his father was a great seeker as well. Flying is a sense of belonging for Harry, and so a broomstick is such a perfect gift for him. Elevated by the fact that this is an international standard, one of the best brooms you can buy, this is God Tier from Sirius. So for Harry's 17th birthday, Ron buys him a book called 12 Failsafe Ways to Charm Witches, and I genuinely think that Ron thinks he's giving a fantastic gift here. After all, Ron himself has read it and felt like he got a lot from it. But look, Harry Potter is the chosen one, and it's quite clear from the year before that he doesn't need help talking to women. Also, I'm sorry, how insulting for your best friend to be like, hmm, I think you need help with flirting. And that's not even to mention the emotional unintelligence of Ron giving this to Harry after Harry just begrudgingly broke up with Ginny because of the danger lying before them on the Horcrux hunt. Like, hey, I know you just broke up with my sister, not because you didn't like her, but because you felt like you had to. Here's a book on how to flirt. It feels tone deaf, kind of rude, apt for someone with the emotional range of a teaspoon, I suppose. It's an F tier gift. Ginny kisses Harry for his 17th birthday, and that's his gift which, as budget options go, could be worse. And look, while I'm sure Harry really appreciated it, I'm not sure it's the best gift in that moment. I mean, a few short months ago, Harry broke up with her, not because he wanted to, but because he felt like he had to, when he knew the dangerous path that lay ahead. So only a couple of months after breaking up with her, I can't imagine a kiss really helps either of them to move on. But that's not to say Harry didn't enjoy it or that in the moment it wasn't a good gift. I think we'll go B tier for this. The Weasley twins give Harry a huge box of merchandise from Weasley's Wizard Wheezes for his 17th birthday. And sure, you can argue that not a lot of time or effort goes into just picking some bits off the shelf of your own shop. But I actually think this gift is personal and thoughtful. I mean, look, I know they're successful but they're still small business owners. Imagine if you had a friend who ran a small business making things and they gave you one of those things as a gift. That's really thoughtful, really personal. They are giving Harry the products that they have spent years crafting. Products which he takes an interest in and are in high demand. I think this is at the very least a B tier gift. It could quite easily slot into A as well, but we've got a high bar, so we're gonna go B tier. Speaking of high bars, I don't think this one really meets them. Bill and Fleur get Harry an enchanted razor for his 17th birthday, which will apparently give him the smoothest possible shave. Now this gift might be symbolic, right? Because at 17, a wizard is considered to come of age. So technically on that day, Harry becomes a man. So, you know, a razor feels like a good gift to mark that occasion, right? But my question is, can Harry even grow facial hair at this point? I definitely couldn't when I was 17. Hell, I barely can now, and this is like 10 years of trying. Either way, we never really hear mention of Harry shaving or having had any kind of scruffy facial hair that needs tending to, so this feels D tier. Like maybe they've just gone through the motions and just thought, what's the easiest thing to get someone who's come of age? Hagrid, on the other hand, for Harry's 17th birthday, gets him a mokeskin pouch, which for the longest time, I thought was a moleskin pouch. Like I read the books and I reread them over and over again, and I always read it as moleskin until about two years ago. Anyway, the mokeskin pouch 
is a great gift because the bag is enchanted so that only the owner can reach in and retrieve whatever they've put into it. And during Harry's Horcrux hunt, this is a great way to store important things like Marauder's maps or Sirius's enchanted mirrors. I don't know why I'm pluralizing these things. There was only one of each of those. The point is when you're going on a dangerous and secret mission, a pouch that only you can put things into and take them out of is a great security measure. It's a great thing to have. And honestly, I don't know why he doesn't use it more. Like why does he not put the Horcrux in there when it's impacting the people who wear it? There's probably some magical reason. I'm sure Hermione would have thought of that as an option and then figured out a reason why it wouldn't work. Either way, this is a great gift. The only downside would have been that Harry probably could have used it sooner. Like this would have been a great gift for him to receive when he was like 13, before all the other stuff that he has to go through. But we're gonna go A tier, what a great gift from Hagrid. So as a Watch fan myself, I am a huge fan of the gift Molly gets for Harry on his 17th birthday. An old watch, a family heirloom. Truly a beautiful gift. Especially when you realize the difference between Harry who has never really had an heirloom beyond James's invisibility cloak and has no family left to give him one, getting one from the closest thing he has to a mother figure in pretty much the whole series. When you compare that to Ron, who has only ever had hand-me-downs his whole life, and he gets a brand new watch for his 17th birthday. It's great juxtaposition. Truly, these are beautiful gifts, they're beautiful moments. When Harry receives his from Molly, it makes me well up reading it every time. So Molly's watch for Harry on his 17th birthday God tier. And so these are the final rankings of Harry Potter's birthday gifts. Let me know if you agree or disagree in the comments below. And remember to check out the unboxing video I did for Harry's birthday on the official Harry Potter YouTube channel. There is a link down in the description. Some of the stuff I got in that box, mind-blowing, fantastic.